We are three weeks out from the tracker. This is the third episode of the Road to Tracker. I'm documenting my experience and my preparation for this event. Tracker. Tracker is one of the most heroic, scenic, week-long festival gravel races in Europe. There's four distances. There's a 540 kilometer, there's a 360 kilometer, there's a 200 kilometer, which I'm doing, and there's also a 100 kilometer distance. This week, we got 23 hours of training on the training peaks. We're gonna be clocking in and doing that this week with some of my friends who are also some of my competitors. We're gonna be doing some training on the road as well as some training on the gravel, testing out the course, the equipment that I'm gonna be using, and I'm also gonna be answering like some of the questions that people have been asking about what the hell I'm doing. So yeah, let's clock in, let's go. Yesterday we got into town from London, flew in, got in pretty late in the evening. Usually I try and build my bike the night I get in, that didn't happen, so I had to bop out on the gravel bike the next day. Usually the day after flying, it's pretty difficult to just like dive straight back into training, so I'll go and do like a two hour steady ride. So actually I went and did like a mini tracker recon. It looks like it must have rained a shit ton whilst I was away because there's so much more grip and there's so much more water on the ground so that's pretty sick. If that happens at a tracker there's just gonna be so much more grip which will probably be better for everybody. Honestly if it's absolutely bone dry when it gets to the day there's gonna be tons of crashes unfortunately like I hate to see people crash but yeah I think there's just gonna be a lot of people taking a lot of risks on the descents and I'm gonna pray for a little bit of rain if I'm honest on the day. My girlfriend is currently in hospital so I went to go and visit her. One thing to take away from that Spanish healthcare system is highly questionable definitely Definitely some uh, room for improvement. If you're thinking about coming over to Spain and riding your bike, make sure you have all that assurance stuff dialed. Let's go. On the chopping block we had today was overgeared efforts. So the cadence is pretty slow. Uh, cadence is just how fast you turn the pedals around and basically I'm not turning them very fast. We're doing 60 to 70 RPM. I do the session quite a lot, two or three of these a week. I actually really enjoy this session. For me, like they are tough and they definitely hurt, but I just enjoy them. I feel like I get something out of them every time I do it. So those are sick. We actually bunked into to Alex Bogner from Alpacin the Koenig. I hope I got that correctly. Anyway, he's usually good morale. He's an Aussie. He went through like the Zwift Academy. We rode back into Girona. I actually had to visit the hospital to visit my girlfriend. It's a little bit of an uphill struggle here with the uh, with the healthcare system. So uh, thankfully my girlfriend is fully covered under insurance, but it's just about like trying to get people to do things here. It's like not as easy as it may seem. A lot of people ask me what helmet I use. I use a Cask Proton. This model has been around for a long time, but it's really adjustable on the back. I would say size up a little bit if you're gonna go for one. Definitely the most comfortable helmet I've ever used and it fits the sunglasses in really really nicely at the top so they don't ever fall out. I've actually got no problems with that helmet at all. Really really like it. Plenty of venting. I'm not a massive fan of aero helmet. I generally prefer to have the ventilation to my head. Going back to me struggling in the heat you know having an aero helmet is definitely not going to help that so that's why I go for the one with more venting but a lot of people asking me for like gravel routes and stuff. I'll put all the gravel routes in my Strava. There's plenty of Girona ones there or London but got lots of road routes and there's some gravel routes in there as well. A lot of people have been asking me what the music is on all the videos. I've actually been teaching myself to produce recently and also mix. All of the mixes can be found on SoundCloud and I'll continue to update them when I feel like I've made a good enough one to put out. So have like a playlist on Spotify as well, so go check that out as well. Which jersey do I prefer? Okay, so currently I really, really like the new protein training jersey. It's really, really nice. It's like a white and cream one. Yeah, that's a really, really nice jersey. The cut on that is phenomenal. I'm 5'8 and I wear an extra small in protein, but I'm also like incredibly slim fit. So definitely take that into account. Might as well talk about bib shorts. My favorite bib shorts are definitely the Rafa Power Weave bib shorts. For road riding anyway, the, the chamois is great and the fit is phenomenal. For gravel, I would use the cargo bibs, always the cargo bibs. They fit like slightly higher on the leg, but they got plenty of pockets. If you've got any more questions, just like put them in the comments. It's another day, third day of the block, five hours with VO2 max efforts, which just basically feels like a race simulation, really. Shout out to Luca, phenomenal morale, rides for Trinity racing. I actually felt like a complete gel. Came back to a juicy little parcel from Rafa. Two jerseys and some of the power weave bibs which are really really expensive but they're definitely the best bibs Rafa makes. Sarah is on the back end of her injury. No she's not. What's it? What did you say? What was that saying? One day or day one. So all those people with any injuries that's the morale you need. We actually came up with some good morale sayings on the ride. You don't need motivation when you have discipline. I heard that one from the 5k guys. Okay Sarah's claiming it but I'm also saying the 5k guys said that first. If it, Shout out the 5k guys. Go follow them on YouTube. They're actually cool. That one's been really helping me at the moment. 
Who's gonna carry the boats is a bit of a classic. I feel like that one got a bit rinsed though, you know? Let's get it. Let's get it is actually morale. I feel like people don't understand where VC Let's Get It came from, but literally came from saying Let's Get It. Like when I used to skateboard, which we call the dark ages because I competed until I was like 16. Then I broke my leg and then I didn't compete for like six years and I just skateboarded and then destroyed my body. And we just said Let's Get It when we would skate. I just took that saying into cycling when I started training again. So we'd be on the rides, just like not enjoying the bad weather, 40K to go and like still a couple climbs. People start whinging and just be like, no, let's get up. VC stands for Velo Club. Essentially, I still ride for them now, but a club called Velo Club Laundress. As VCL is a club, it's based at Hernhill Velodrome. I've been taking this mass gainer because it's a good mix of carbohydrate and protein, and not just proteins. I usually struggle to eat straight after rides because, I don't know, man, I've been eating all day. Lots of sugars. I believe I have a rest day tomorrow. I better have a rest day because, honestly, I'm pretty good day. Ah, oh, yeah. we just have gym tomorrow. I use this app called Training Peaks to log all my training. If I can get you a discount code, I will. And I'll put it in the link in bio, but I can't promise anything. So if it's in the link in bio, Training Peaks do support me a little bit, but I paid for this software for years before they did. So shout out Training Peaks, good people over there. So today we literally only have two things to do. We have to go for a run, and then we're also gonna go to the gym. So I'm gonna kind of tie that to two in one. I'm gonna spend as much time off the bike as I can this morning, just catching up with emails, editing this video. I'm gonna try out some of the new Salomon Trail shoes that I got given a while back that I haven't tried. They said they were the best shoes they made so far, so we'll see if they're lying or capping or not. Yeah, we'll probably run in those. And I've actually got loads of Salomon shoes that I've not tried yet. They did give me like a good amount of shoes to try. So they gave me some like carbon plated shoes. Yeah, I've got this like plastic plated shoe, which is really 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 reasonable it was only like 80 euros and for like a fast shoe that's pretty reasonable and i use them for my iron man they're a little bit harsh to use for like longer runs so i wouldn't recommend them for that but they are a really really good shoe and they come in a nice color as well and then i've got a ton of trail shoes to also try but i've not been running on the trails recently because honestly they're quite taxing on the legs and the knees so we're, we're kind of near the start of getting back into running again so there's inevitably oh, another iron man later this year so we'll stay locked for that we'll go to the gym we'll do like a bunch of single leg stuff some double leg stuff all of this is usually in the squat rack with the bar on the shoulder just because it creates a slightly more upper body workout when you're doing that and you just get a bit more out of it in my opinion i'm definitely going to start doing a little bit more work on like injury prevention stuff so working on my hip flexors not just stretching them but also strengthening the hip flexors this bit here usually my legs are pretty sore after the course so i don't know how the training session tomorrow is going to go but we will find out just got back from probably one of the hardest sessions of the week VO2 max efforts, they're basically two minutes and every 30 seconds you do like a 10 second sort of out the saddle sprint. It's just an all out effort. And if I'm really honest, they're really, really savage. And they do take a lot of mental energy as well as physical energy. And then I'm supposed to ride zone two in between all of that, which is a pretty steady state, but at times I was really, really struggling to hold the wattage. So I think that's a good sign. It means that the training is uh, starting to take its toll on me this week. Not made out of sugar. And we came here for a tough time, not a long time. Stopped to fill up my bottles with Fanta because there's nothing more I'd rather drink than Fanta. How much Fanta do I drink a week? A day, apparently a day is what it needs to be. Got home, had a protein shake. A lot of people been asking me what I film my videos on. This bad boy. Today we did another track of recon. We did the first bit and the last bit of the course. Again, we've been through the first bit. The first bit is actually pretty hilly. Go straight past my apartment and kind of climbs for like 20K. And then we kind of cross over the top and then we head back down. And then we did like the back end of the course, which if anybody's watched any of the Santa Val videos or um, or ridden the Santa Val, it's basically the back end of the Santa Val, which is pretty tame, but it's actually pretty technical. But we had a decent group out as well. So we had Garrison, Scarboo, Neve, Fabian, decent squad for an bit hours on the gravel bikes i actually decked it and fell on my ass which was pretty annoying and got like a huge bruise on my hip but that's the first time i've crashed this year and if you're not crashing you're not going fast enough i just needed to get that crash out of the way because in cycling it's not about if you crash it's about when you're going to crash and inevitably to find the limits of the tires which i definitely did and also the limits of my bike handling those limits were found i'm absolutely loving this new flavor of red bull that i found in the shops recently i think it's dragon fruit i don't remember loving dragon 
dragon fruit like that previously. Dad cam absolutely left the chat. This thing, I love this thing, but it let me down today. Shout out to the iPhone for backing it up. Today, I peeled myself off the sheets after the crash I had yesterday. Up a 23 hour week on the bike. Today, we went out on the road bikes. And we met up with a much a similar crew to yesterday, plus Luke Lamperti and Rachel. We did about 1800 meters of climbing in 125 kilometers, a pretty lumpy route. I mean, the climbs are at least 20 to 30 to 40 minutes long. We also found this area where they have clearly been queuing for hours, but for like fresh water out of the mountains. So the, the cost benefit analysis for that, not really sure what's going on there, Chief, but the water, it was all right. We did have to wait. Like he must have been on his like 10th or 13th plastic container that he was filling up and he kindly let us slide in the queue and fill up our bottles. Was it worth it? I don't know. I think the, the water from the shop is about two euros. So. Apparently the tap water tastes pretty bad here, but I actually think it tastes pretty good. Do you think the tap water tastes bad here? See, I think, it, I think it tastes pretty good here. Maybe that's just the British in me. Yeah, it was a decent hack and we got up really early because we knew we needed to be back by three because that's when the boys were gonna ride through the, what's that sector called? The Arenberg. Boys were gonna head through the Arenberg at about 3 p.m. So we made sure we got back in time for that. They actually got there just a little bit earlier because it's pretty fast, Paris Bay this year. Tailwind, and obviously the boys are just gunning it. Actually, Luke had some pretty good insights. He just finished a classic season. So it's pretty interesting to chat to him about how fast the racing is and how much the fight for position is just ridiculous. Maybe a reason for why there's so many crashes in quite a lot of the races at the moment. We had a pretty decent week. Thanks for coming. Let's go.